circle tangents y over x. Cotangent is the x coordinate over the y coordinate. So if we want to graph tangent, what we're going to do is we're going to look at negative pi over 2. If you go this direction, it's a negative angle to positive pi over 2. If you go counterclockwise, it's a positive angle. We're going to look at these points along the unit circle and we're going to get our tangent graph. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So y equals tangent of x. Okay, if we start over here at negative pi over 2, I'm going to the left because it's negative, and I'm going this direction, that's a negative angle. This direction is a positive angle. So at negative pi over 2, tangent is y over x, negative 1 divided by 0 is undefined. You can't divide by 0, so we get a vertical asymptote on our graph. If we go to negative pi over 4 right here, Tangent is y over x, negative square root 2 over 2 divided by positive square root 2 over 2. That's going to give you negative 1. If you go to 0, tangent is 0 over 1, which is 0. Positive pi over 4, y over x is positive 1. And if we go to pi over 2, 0 over 1 is 0. Ah, sorry, 0 over 1 is well, I, got, I have my coordinates messed up here. This is a 0 comma 1. 1 over 0 is undefined. So you can't divide by 0. So there's your asymptote right there. Okay. So now when you look at your graph, tangent looks like, like that. So it gets closer and closer to the asymptotes. And this will actually repeat like that and like that and so on. So you can see from here to here, 1 cycle, one period is pi. So remember for sine and cosine, the period is two pi normally. For tangent and cotangent, it completes one cycle and one pi. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna look at what happens if you stretch this graph, compress this graph, and so on. But before we do that, let's take a look at cotangent. So we've got the unit circle right here. So Cotangent, I'll put it right underneath tangent so you can kind of compare and contrast. Cotangent, we're going to look at the points from 0 to 180, 0 to pi. So cotangent is x over y. So 1 over 0, that's undefined. You can't divide by 0. So we get a vertical asymptote. At pi over 4, x over y is 1 because anything divided by itself is going to give you 1. At pi over 2, x over y, 0 over 1 is 0. At 3 pi over 4, x divided by y, negative square root 2 over 2 over positive square root 2 over 2 is negative 1. And then if we go over to pi, x over y, negative 1 over 0 is undefined. We get another vertical asymptote. So for cotangent, the graph looks like that. And again, it repeats just like tangent, okay, every pi, so that the period is pi. Now what some students remember is that tangent's going up to the right, cotangent's going down to the right. Tangent, half the graph's to the left of the y-axis, okay, half's to the right. Whereas for cotangent, the whole graph is to the, to the right of the y-axis here. Okay, so kind of notice the difference. So tangent, half on the left, half on, is on the right side of the y-axis. Cotangent, the whole graph is to the right of the y-axis. They both have a period of pi, okay, and you can divide it up into four pieces like we did here. These are the basic parent graphs. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to look at the stretching and the compressing and the shifting, just like we did with sine and cosine. So let's just take a look. Say I want to graph y equals two tangent of x. What do you think the two does to the graph? That's right, it stretches it. So instead of being here at one, you're going to be up here at two now. Instead of being here at negative one, you're going to be down here at negative two. This is a vertical stretch. So it's like you're pulling on it, okay? Stretching it this way, okay? It's the same thing for these, okay? Now if we look at cotangent, let's say for cotangent we want to graph y equals cotangent of 2x. Okay, what do you think the 2 does to the graph? Well, we can use this formula, period equals 1 pi divided by b, this is the b value, 2. 
Okay, so what that means is completing one cycle and pi over two. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna compress this. It's actually gonna divide the x values by two. It's gonna complete one cycle like this now. It's compressing it. Okay, and then you can shift it to the left and right, up and down. So I'm gonna erase this uh, real quick and we're gonna take a look at some more difficult problems. But if you forget, just go back to the unit circle, tangents y over x from negative 90 to positive 90, cotangent from zero to pi or zero to 180, that's x over y for cotangent. And that's how you can get the parent graphs and then you can stretch them, compress them, shift them and so on. Let's look at some more difficult problems and uh, you'll see what I mean. Okay, here's a good one right here. Let's do y equals one half tangent one half x minus pi plus two. Okay, what I would do, just like we did for sine and cosines, I would graph the parent function using the amplitude, the a value, and the b value, which affects the period. Then we can pick up the graph and shift it right pi. Remember, this one has the opposite effect. This one has the same effect on the graph. Plus two is actually up two. So let's start by graphing this one here. Now, I'm just gonna start by graphing the asymptotes. I'm gonna take the period, which is normally pi for tangent and cotangent, I'm gonna divide it by one half, which gives you a period of two pi. Because remember, when you divide by a fraction, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal, so that's like multiplying by two, that's two pi. But what I'm gonna do, and this is what uh, some students get a little confused by, half's on the right side of the y-axis, half's on the left. I'm gonna take this two pi, I'm gonna divide it in half. So this is actually pi here, and negative pi giving you a period of two pi. I'm gonna divide it in half again. These are like our midway points, pi over two and negative pi over two. And then the amplitude's a half, so we're gonna go up here to a half, and uh, let's, let me erase this a little bit. Let me just put a half over here, and uh, negative a half down here, okay? And so our graph's gonna look like this. Okay, that's our parent graph, okay? But then what we're gonna do is we're gonna shift it right pi and up two. Now on our scale, pi is actually two steps. So everything's gonna shift two steps to the right and up two steps, okay? So what we have to do here is we're gonna take each of these asymptotes, we're gonna shift them right to, so now your asymptote's gonna be right there. This one's gonna go right here. This point's gonna be go here and up two. So I'm just gonna estimate for this. This is gonna go right two, okay, and up two, I'm just gonna estimate for that. And then this one's gonna go right two and up two. And so our graph now looks like that. Okay, the red graph, so it shifted right two and up two based on the scale that we had. Okay, so that's tangent. Let's do a more challenging cotangent graph. The key, I believe, is to do it in steps. You know, graph the amplitude and period in one step, then you can graph the, the shifted graph in the second step. So let's graph this uh, cotangent graph. Let's just say we're gonna graph y equals negative cotangent. Uh, let's just say this is two x minus pi over four. Okay, we'll just do this one a little bit more simple. So cotangent looks like this. Here's the y-axis, here's the x-axis. It goes down to the right, like that. Okay, it's to the right of the y-axis, whereas tangents, half's on the left, half's on the right. The period is gonna be two pi divided by uh, two, I'm sorry, one pi. Tangent, cotangent, the period is normally pi. Sine and cosine, the period is two pi. So we take pi divided by two, okay? So that means one period is gonna be completed in pi over two. I'm gonna divide this into one, two, three, four pieces. So this is pi over four, pi over eight, and three pi over eight, okay? So you can take pi over two, divide by four, that's pi over eight, and that's gonna give us our scale. Now the negative, what do you think the negative does? The negative reflects it over the x-axis. It makes the positive y values negative and the negative one's positive. And what do you think the pi over four does? 
shifts at right pi over four. So everything's gonna shift, even these asymptotes, okay, right pi over four. Now on our scale, that's gonna be two units to the right because we're counting by pi over eight. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, first I'm gonna reflect this, so the graph looks like this, okay? And then it's gonna shift right pi over four. So these points are gonna go one, two, one, two, one, two, and the asymptotes also are gonna go one, two, and one, two. So your graph now is gonna look like, uh, like this. Okay, it's going up to the right because it was reflected over the x-axis by this negative here. So that's cotangent, we talked about tangent, and if you just go back to the parent function, like I said, do the a and the b first, and then you can shift it second, you'll have the graph down. Um, so that's tangent and cotangent. Uh, take a look at the graphs I did on sine and cosine for additional pointers, and we'll take a look at uh, secant and cosecant in the next video.